Why does Daniel Smith have so many new grays? Let's find out. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Elisa at Elisa Laporte Art. Today we are going to talk about and look at why Daniel Smith has so many grays. We will be reviewing each pigment to see what makes them different. If you would like to see more videos like this, please subscribe. It really helps me out. And comment below what paints or colors you would like to see me test and review. Now let's move over to our painting board. All right, let's dive right in. First thing we have here is our gray titanium. Joseph Zabuvik's neutral gray, Joseph's warm gray, Joseph's cool gray, Alvaro's caliente gray, and Alvaro's fresco gray. We're going to start by swatching our gray titanium. It is a single pigment, mid-tone warm with yellowish undertones. It is semi-transparent, granulating, non-staining, and is a one or excellent on the light fastness scale. Now Daniel Smith said that this color and granulation make it great for dusty desert animals like elephants, deer, tortoises, birds, whose feathers camouflage into the dry woodlands, savanna, and desert, like roadrunners and burrowing owls. This pigment would also be beautiful for trees, shrubs, branches, and twigs that are light in color. I'm going to start this swatch going from dark to light. I want to see the range of opaque to transparency I have with it. That's why I have these black lines across it. I want to see how transparent or opaque they are. It does have a nice granulation to it. I will say it is a lot more opaque coming right out of the tube than I thought it would be. It is very light in color and I do see those yellow tones in there just like it says it would have. Now I'm going to check out the staining quality. It says non-staining so I'm going to take some fresh clean water and just scrub that and then blot it with a paper towel and it'll just pick up the paint that I got wet and I will be able to see if it's staining or not and it looks like it is correct. It is non-staining and it just comes right out, which is a beautiful thing. It's great to know when painting, so if I want to pull things out or if I want to leave them. Next up, I'm going to test out Joseph Z's Neutral Gray. Now this paint is semi-transparent. It is a one on the light fastness scale, granulating and low staining. Joseph commented that this was great for New York type cityscapes. When undiluted, it's basically black. It can provide powerful monolithic shapes without looking chalky. And it gives a look of charcoal drawings or old fashioned photos. And just for comparison's sake, you can see already how much darker in pigment this paint is in comparison to our gray titanium. And we're going to start again having a really thick, dark wash on the left side and we will get lighter as we move to the right side, testing out the opacity and the transparency and looking for the granulation in it, which has a beautiful granulation as you can see right here, all those wonderful little specks in there. And now we're going to as well check out the staining quality and this one is semi staining and or low staining and so you can see still a little bit of that gray in there but it's very subtle so it's also good to know if you want to pull things out but still just have a little bit in there and it is not as opaque as our gray titanium. Now we're gonna move on to Joseph Z's warm gray. This gray is also semi-transparent with a one on the light fastness scale, granulating and low staining. It, it will be warmer in hue and I can see that it has yellow ochre in it, which 
would add more yellow and more warmth to this gray, which will be a very nice contrast to this very neutral gray. You can, you can't tell right now, but it will be very neutral in comparison to a lot of these grays that I put on here that are more either cool or warm. This one is neither cool nor warm. It's very, very neutral, which is really nice. On our palette itself, you can see that this pigment is not much different to our neutral gray. Um, so that's why it is important for us to swatch these out because what it looks like on the palette and what it looks like on paper are two very different things. Again, going in with the dark, very pigmented on the left side, working our way to more transparency on the right. And this one lives up to that transparency of only being semi-transparent. Again, you will be able to see this beautiful granulation that we are getting in Joseph's Warm Gray. Right now, I don't see a lot of difference between our Warm Gray and our Neutral Gray, but I'm sure once we put our Cool Gray in there, you're going to see a big difference. Let's check out our staining quality here. Remember, put fresh water down, let it sit, then put some more fresh water on and then start scrubbing where that water is. And then you're going to just dab it off and you're gonna see that, that paper shine through. On this one again, you do see that it is low staining. I can see just a little bit of specks of that gray in there. I just love these colors that Joseph Zabovic picked. If you've ever seen his work, you know he is a master of his craft. And more often than not, Joseph uses these grays for atmospheric perspective and gets such beautiful depth in his paintings. With Joseph Z's cool gray, it looks like we have the same qualities as his other paints had. Semi-transparent, a one or excellent on the light fastness scale, granulating and low staining. You can see these are qualities he really is looking for in his paints. He wants to still be able to scrub out some of that paint if he needs to, but have a little bit of that nitty grittiness still in there. And he really loves that transparency that they can get. Again, I'm not seeing much contrast between our pigments straight out of the tube on our palette. So we have to go to swatching our pigments, going from dark to light, testing out our transparency and opacity and checking out the granulation. It is very important for us to test out our paints and know what their properties are, know what your paints do. So when you go to paint with them, you're not surprised by the outcome. Here we can definitely see that it is more of a cool blue. Him using cobalt turquoise where he used yellow ochre in the warm one, you can see those big contrasts between them. But you don't see that if you don't map it out and don't do your swatches. I mean, look at these two in comparison to our neutral. You can see such contrast between them now. I love swatching out my paints and seeing each one's characteristics and getting to know them. Something to note as I am testing for the staining quality, I am not scrubbing very hard at all. I am letting the water do the work and then I just use the brush to lightly brush it off. If you're scrubbing really hard, you're going to damage your paper and you really do not want to do that. Alvaro Castagne is another master artist and his Caliente Gray is a warm, semi-transparent, it's an excellent light fastness and non-granulating, low staining, it's powerful, excellent hue to create warm and strong paintings. Alvaro said when used monochrome, this gray is perfect to achieve a powerful atmosphere with amazing glow. Perfect to add dramatic highlights and shadows. Let's check out our transparency. Wow, this one packs a punch, doesn't it? Very, very saturated. I really love this color. And as opposed to Joseph Z's warm gray, as you saw above, 
he uses a burnt sienna in his pigment where Joseph uses a yellow ochre. Let's check out the staining quality and here I'm going to give you a close-up view so you can really see how soft I'm actually being with my brush just taking out this paint. I really am not doing a lot of work. I am not scrubbing really hard. I'm just touching very lightly. It does feel a little bit warmer than Joseph's right now. That could be because it's still wet. I'm also noticing that the gray titanium is the only one with any amount of opacity so far. Last but very not least are Alvero's Fresco Gray. This is a cool semi-transparent one or excellent light fastness, granulating, low staining. He uses ultramarine blue in this one, so it should be a very cool color. He said it is a powerful true hue with no artificial look. It is passionate and mysterious, great to evoke distant elements of any kind, even the unknown. They are about magnetism, fury, energy, and power. I just love hearing him say that about his paints because I've heard him speak in videos and heard people talk about him and that is truly who he is. He embodies all of that. So to create a paint that really just echoes who he is, is very cool. I'm very excited to have these paints. I really admire these artists and look to them for getting advice for myself into growing and building in my own style. Both of them have a very similar yet very unique style in the way they do things. And as I was reviewing these colors, it reminded me of when I reviewed the Payne's gray and neutral tint and showed you how to create your own gray. And if you would like to check that out, I will leave a link in the card above. Lastly, check out the granulation and low staining in this one. So why does Daniel Smith have so many grays? Well, colors have an infinite range. And as artists, we're not all going to like the same colors. This allows us to choose the ones that are right for us and our painting style. I hope this video helped you find the perfect gray for you. And I will leave a link to my website where you can find a high resolution picture of the grays we reviewed today. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. It really helps me out and click that bell so you can be notified when I upload a new video on values. And as always, keep on painting.